Justin Giddings, the CEO with AMDA Foundation Limited. Uh, thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Thanks for having me. Wonderful. And you're a fresh uh, CEO role, and this is your first uh, Avalon 2023, which is uh, we're proud to be media partners uh, once again. Uh, there's a couple of ways. Definitely always interested in the, in the uh, CEO role, particularly when you're taking on a new sort of leadership role. But Avalon 2023 kicks off in about 20 days. I've got the website up uh, and the countdown is there. And uh, it's the first one for a few years. I think the last one was 2019. So we missed out on a year. Maybe introduce us to Avalon 2023. And I wouldn't mind sort of covering your CEO role as well. Yeah, sure. No worries. So look, thanks for having me. It's uh, very exciting. I don't know if I'm fresh. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm certainly very busy at this stage, certainly being my first role um, or first air show really since becoming the CEO of AMDA. It's a very exciting time, I must say. Uh, yep. We've had two events previously, the Land Forces and Indo-Pacific, and both of them had record numbers. And already we're looking at having record numbers for the 2023 air show. Um, having missed the 2021, which was the centenary of the Air Force, um, I think everyone's eager to get back um, to Avalon again. Uh, our exhibitors, our exhibition space is completely full, 100% full. Wow. We've got a wait list of about 100 organisations looking to come in. Um, so our sales team is frantically trying to fit in as many as we can, but it's just we just need more space. It's um, real. The ticket sales are looking great. Um, I think this time um, in 2019, at this time of the show, we were about half of where we are now. Wow. Um, so we're completely, you know, really looking forward to a bumper crowd. Of course, having children free this year, it's all about, you know, our mission really is to encourage people into the industry um, to, you know, be a, a platform for businesses to meet and to trade and to and build relationships. And we've got some great things coming, especially in the space industry in particular, but also in, in aviation more generally. So... Um, it's, you know, it's really good. I mean, I'll be relieved in about 30 days <laughs> or dead. Well, um, obviously you've, you've pulled off land forces up in Brisbane and then you had the Pacific uh, 2022 here in, in Sydney. So it's great to be, and we're looking forward to getting back down to Avalon uh, also. And I think Avalon, you, you mentioned you're running out of space. That's pretty incredible given the size uh, of the field that you have uh, there as well. But just for those of the audience, it's split up into industry for the first few days and then it's open to the public. But this is, uh, I think it's the biggest event outside the Australian Open in terms of people numbers. So it looks like you might crack the 40,000 this year, do you think? In terms of numbers, no, we'll do yeah. a lot more than that. So we yeah. in 2017, we had about 180,000 people. Um, Got it. Maybe yeah, it's 40,000 a day then, is it? Uh, so, I've so somewhere here. Yeah, no, that'd be easy. We can probably uh, get rid of uh, a lot of our structures. But no, we, um, no we're, we're hoping for, we've got 80,000 tickets available each public day. So there's wow. three public days on the Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So we're looking at around about a maximum of 240,000. We won't get that. But right. certainly the Saturday is going very, very well and the Friday as well. Um, the trade days operate from Tuesday through to Thursday and Friday morning as well. Um, and that's a great opportunity if you're in the industry to really try and get a trade ticket and come along because we've got a lot of international um, conferences and, and you know, parties coming out from all around the world. Um, in particular, I think we've got yep. space agencies yep. from India, Poland, the United Kingdom and the US coming out um, and they'll be here for the trade days in particular. So like I said, if you're in the industry, that's the time to come. But if you want to see aircraft fly, well, that's on the weekend. Nice. And as you mentioned, you've got a complimentary conferences list. Uh, includes, given our audience for space, is the Advancing uh, Space. You've got Australian Government Briefing with the Australian Space Agency, Aus Industry and Aus Trade, uh, as well as all of the big players there as well. Anything potentially new from, say, 2017 and 20... Was it 2019? I had that right. We were there in 2019. Yes, that's right. In 2019, we had um, the... Uh, last air show, it was very hot, if you recall. It was 45 degrees on some yeah, of the days. Yeah. And so it was an excellent show. It was by far the best we've had, but it wasn't the most populous. Um, 2017 was the best. But we think, you know, expectations are that we might even exceed 2017 this time. There's a lot of things that are new. Um, from a public perspective, first of all, um, we're selling tickets in a way that allocates and spreads 
the demand across the three days so that we can have a better amenity for people to walk around. So some of the days have been very full in the past yep. and that causes traffic you know, issues and other things. So we're capping the tickets at 80,000 a day um, and the most popular day at the moment is the Saturday. Um, the, the, look, the signature act will be the Black Eagles, no doubt. I mean, they're coming out from Korea. Um, I saw them at Riyadh um, late or middle of last year and it was just sensational. It was a, a you know, I, and I actually said to one of my colleagues at the time, if we could get these Black Eagles out, well, we won't have to do much else. And, um, and they've agreed to come out. And they were going to come for 29, uh, 2021, but, of course, that cancelled. Um, so... You know, the, the space is certainly going to be a big part of it, as you mentioned, some of the exhibitions already, but there's some conferences um, that will be on, on display. Um, we've got 25 chiefs or counterparts coming out from, for yeah. international yeah. chiefs and counterparts coming out from around the world. I think the most we've ever had before is about 14 or 15. Um, we've got 11 chief represent representatives, six national armament directors and three space command representatives. So... You know, it's uh, looking really good. Um, we've got second entrances. We've got, you know, new we've got screens around the site that we can take advantage of, especially for, for sponsors, look after sponsors such as Space TV, but also, um, you know, other things for the public, for general, you know, you know information about what's flying. Um, and also we're hoping to have some cams up in some of the aircraft to be able to observe what the aircraft is experiencing as they do their performance. Nice. Yeah, okay, that's a good one. And I, I will say, I, I've just found that that number, the 40,000 or thereabouts, is actually just for the trade and industry sessions, let alone the public uh, there as well, with about just under 700 participating companies uh, from 2019. Um, I suppose one of the things is you were the CEO of Avalon Airport. This is a really good one for Geelong, is one of the, the city of Geelong is also a key partner. Maybe just talk us through your key partners and what this means for uh, the, say, the city of Geelong and Avalon itself. Yep, sure. So, um, so well, Avalon Airport, as you know, um, I was there for 13 years as a CEO and the, the biggest event that we have in Geelong and living in Geelong all my life is the Avalon Air Show. It's, uh, it fills up all of the, the hotels, not just in Geelong, but in Melbourne as well and where are we? It brings a lot of people to stay for a few days and they can get to travel around. Um, so there's certainly, it's a great airport. It's probably the best airport in Australia for such yeah. an event. Um, nice and close to Melbourne, very accessible. Uh, but look, the de definitely the key stakeholders are, look, the Air Force have been fantastic. The relationship we have with them, it really is a partnership and uh, they're super keen and been very, very supportive of making sure, you know, they have a great participation, but also we're equally trying to encourage kids through that free children's option to come along, experience it, get hooked into the industry so that they can look to, you know, train in either engineering or maybe even become a pilot um, in the future. Um, the Victorian government's been fantastic. But, look, our major sponsors, we've got Boeing, Jet Aviation, L3 Harris, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and Go Beyond. Um, that's a Pratt & Whitney. Um, and I just think that, you know, you know, we really are, it'll be the biggest one we've ever had. It's um, the best sponsorship presence we've ever had. It'll have the best acts we've ever had. It'll have the best, biggest exhibition we've ever had. It'll be, have the best amenity on the ground we've ever had. No, and it's no. certainly got conferences that people will come from around the world to see. So those trade days in particular, a lot to encourage you, you know, your audience, um, you know, you know, I know we've got ambassadors from the US, everyone coming out. And if you really want an opportunity to network, um, I, as I understand it, there's, there's exhibitors come out from the US to actually get access to the US um, yeah. hierarchy because it's actually, easy to access them. Yeah, it's actually easier to access them here than what it is in the US. So, um, you know, all of our events are very friendly and they're meant to be very engaging. And we've designed the trade days in a way that allows people you know, not just to be drowned out by aircraft noise all day, but to be able to network and, and really get to meet and, and, and network. One, one question, because I, I like the way uh, drones was introduced uh, a few years ago as well, and the drone racing is definitely one to watch. Uh, you've got the Army drone racing team there, also very impressive. 
Uh, much more on uh, robotics this year. Have you seen much on robotics? Drones and robotics very close, but specifically uh, robotics? Yes, absolutely. Robotics is a way of the future, and it's certainly going to be a big part of our show as well. I noticed up at Land Forces, robotics was a huge. I mean, I'm not yeah, sure if yeah. you were up there and you saw that dog. It is, you know, the dog's running around, the robotic dog. So, so that'll all be here again. Um, so that'll be a big part. The drone tent is um, going up, I think, as we speak. I was out there this morning and they were preparing. And so that's going to be very popular again. That was here in 2019. Um, but the tent this year is going to be even larger than what it was before. Um, and it's, called, it's actually the drone and bone tent. So when the drones aren't flying, the... Um, the army dogs come out and they do a demonstration as well. So very yeah, easy. Nice. Yes. Okay, I like it. Well, look, <laughs> Justin Giddings, the CEO with AMDA Foundation. Uh, after Avalon, what's the outlook for 2023? What else have you got on? Because your program slightly changed uh, during uh, COVID. What's uh, after Avalon and sort of the 2023, 2024? What's the program? So, so up in November, we'll be back at Sydney for Indo-Pacific. Got it. And um, that's very exciting. And then, of course, next year we'll have Land Forces again. And we might just have another another event we haven't announced yet. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be announced probably in the next few weeks so, or maybe at the air show itself. So, um, so we're looking to expand on, on our events and really make sure that we look after the industry we, we all serve. Wonderful. Well, look, Justin, thank you so much. And just for the audience there, airshow.com.au. Check it out and we'll see you down at Avalon in 20 days, 18 hours, 19 minutes and 45 seconds. All the best. Thank you very much, Justin. Thanks very much, everyone. Cheers.